Hey guys. Hey, today we're going to come back. We're going to use the S-crank style square bill again. I use this lure a lot. I like it, so I end up painting quite a few of them. Uh, going through an old Bass Pro catalog the other day, and I happened to stumble on from Bandit Lures. Had a little bit different uh, perch pattern. Now, I didn't quite want to do it exactly the same. I want to change it just a little bit. But that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go with the Bandit Lures perch pattern that they called Chocolate Perch. So let's head over to the workbench. We'll give her a shot. All right. As always, first thing we want to do, we're going to put a base coat on before our colors. Create text. Opaque white. And that will be our base coat. Running about 40 pounds of air pressure, maybe a little bit less, and all I want is a nice, even coat to get those colors to come out right. And that's all it takes. All right, now let's move on to colors. All right, today for this lure, we're going to mix up some different styles of paint. We're going to use the Createx, the Transparence. But we're also going to use Walmart. These Walmart Apple Barrel brands, these used to have to be thinned down quite a bit. Sometimes they can give you a little bit of trouble because they have bigger pigment flakes. It can cause you some plug up problems. We'll hope we don't have that. But we're going to try two different styles of paint today. We're going to start out with the Createx. I'm going to use a transparent orange. Now when I saw this lure, or this pattern, in an old catalog, it didn't have orange on the belly. I think it had a little bit of red right up in front, but I decided I'm going to change that slightly. I want the orange in the belly. So, transparent orange, right down the belly. And that's it. Just one shot right down the belly. That's all we need for that. All right, let me clean up. We'll move on to the Walmart paint. We're going to start out Walmart Apple Barrel brand. This is called Khaki. You know, this paint isn't necessarily made to be run through these guns. So sometimes that doesn't work quite as well, but what we're trying to do with it here, it does work. You can have some problems, like I said getting your gun plugged up a little bit because the paint pigments it is way too thick you're going to have to thin it you can see I just thin mine with a couple squirts of water there is commercial thinner you can buy but this is what we're going to go with here they say the consistency of milk I've never understood why milk is different in water but this is what we're going to try All right. Pour a little of that in. All right, let me get it over here. Here we go. And we're just going to cover the entire lure now. Let it taper down on that orange on the belly. Let it sit down there and settle down in a little more and get a little more out of it, maybe. All right, that's it. So we got it. We got our orange in the belly. We got this khaki or light tan on the side. Now, I'm going to get the heat gun. We're going to dry this real well, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, I have moved the lure over the help my hands. Got it all dry. Now we're coming back. Apple barrel. This is called chocolate bar. And we're just going to take the same cup where we had the khaki. Going to add a little chocolate bar to it. And we'll probably have to add some more water. Yeah, let's see. I want a darker chocolate than that, I think. Hang on. A little more chocolate bar. Not quite going to go for Hershey's, but... There, right, get that. Let's put a little water in there. Just a little squirt. You can always add more water. Can't take it out, but you can add it. Yeah, 
Yeah, we're getting about the color I want. Now we gotta thin it down some more. I guess this would be like chocolate milk, right? Yeah, it's a fine line when you're doing this one. Too thick, you plug it up. Too thin, it comes out real watery. It doesn't look good either. I guess that would be skim milk. All right? All right. Let's throw some in the gun here. Make a spot right. All right. Now I need to make some marks on the side. And been using the stencils here that I picked up from Lure Parts Online, it has a bar stencil. But I thought, let's go back to the old comb we'd used before. Now, in this situation, ah, hang on, let me get this thing to shut off over here. All right, the comb normally went like this. You hold them up. I took a Dremel tool and kind of roughed these, this side up over here. And the reason I did that, get back over here, I was trying to get this effect. The same effect they have on here, I was trying to get through my comb. It's not going to sit in as tight, so you're not going to get a real sharp image, I don't think, on this one. At least I have in the past, but we're going to hold it right up here close. We're going to put our bars right there. I'm going to turn him over. Okay, loose out of the deal. There we go. Get it back hold of it again. We'll sit this side, set them back up again. Let's match up. Okay, I want a little more here. What we're going to do, even the back side, all you got to do is be a little careful, line it back up. As long as you can see through it, you got it in the same spot. Got those two. Now, one more thing, we're going to stand it upright. As you can see, doesn't look the best. We'll take our chocolate. We're going to go right down the top. And that's it. And that will be, eventually, we'll just get eyes and a top coat. And that's going to be my version of the chocolate perch. All right, time for some eyes. You know what? With the brown lure like this, I thought, let's go with yellow. I like to use a little tacky glue. Get a little bit on the toothpick and apply. But I don't want to wipe you guys out here, moving that so close to the camera. Put a little bit. And it doesn't take much. Just a little bit. I mean, the, the eye has already got the sticky to it. But I like to add just a little tacky glue if I can. Set that in place. And one on the other side. Kind of get that position in where I want it. That eye could probably be just a tad bigger to fit this one. It fits a lot of my other ones. It's just a tad small on the S-crank, but you know what? I doubt the fish notice it. If I was selling them, wanted to get a bunch of money for one, yeah, you better have the right size eye in it. All right. We're going to let these sit for about 20 minutes, and then we'll put our top coat on. All right, guys. Let's do a little top coat, huh? I am using Bob Smith Industry 30 Minute Slow Cure. And I just put out some equal amounts. I've been putting it getting around colder weather this time of year, and sometimes I like to put it in the hot water. Tend to uh, thin it down a little bit. Hot water gives you a little more working time with it. And I tell you what, we're going to come back and little glob there just to try to get it at 50 percent. Me, I'm never perfect and I know other people say you should be. 
but uh, haven't had a problem as of yet with it. So there we go. All right, let's see what we got here. Again, paint brushes. If you're new, just Walmart. Cheap Walmart paint brushes, you know, 20 or 30 in a package for two dollars, something like that. Doesn't worry about brush strokes or anything because the epoxy will even itself out as you hang it up to let it dry because it's got that slow cure to dry. So it'll slowly even itself out and get rid of any brush strokes you leave in it. Main thing is, make sure you get all the spots looking over good. Hey, while we're doing this, I want to thank everybody for subscribing, for watching. I appreciate it. I really appreciate all you guys, or gals, I guess, that are buying t-shirts or phone cases or pop sockets or stuff like that. I do appreciate it. Not a very big channel, so you're not going to get any sponsors, so you do whatever you can. It takes a lot of... spend quite a bit of time with this, but I about admit I enjoy it. I love doing it. So, that alone, but hey, if you can do something extra on the side, why not? And I do appreciate all of you that have helped support me through the t-shirts and all the other stuff. And for you walleye guys, yeah, I'm thinking of you. I've got something coming up, I think, for walleye. We'll see. Not everybody's a bass fisherman like me. I understand that one. All right, get it on there. Let's look it over really good. Make sure we didn't miss any spots. Make sure we got under that nose good. We always want to be under the nose. Little spot right in there, it doesn't look quite even. We'll just go over that real quick. I think we got it. And I think that is going to have us. Now, going to take this. As always, we're going to take a wire, put a wire in there. We will hang it up. Anything that runs off should run here on the wire, make it a lot easier to clean up when it's all said and done. I will tell you, sometimes I will take and come out here maybe 20 minutes after this is hung for about 20 minutes and a lot of times I can pull the wire there might be a little stuff in the hole and at that point in time I'm just going to take a regular toothpick and I'll kind of run a toothpick through it and I can get the excess off and that'll do it but you got to probably be you know depending on how thin it was the temperature and everything else maybe 15 maybe 20 or 30 minutes after you put it on to get that project done all right, we're going to let this dry, and we'll see what we got when we're all said and done. Well, there we go, guys. There is the chocolate perch. You know, the brown colors, we'll think of that sometimes in a crawdad pattern. I don't know if we think so much about it in a perch pattern or not, but I like it. saw it in the book. thought it was kind of neat, and I thought, well, we're going to try that one. Hey, thanks for sticking with me. Subscribe to the channel if you would. Hope to see you again real soon.